Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of 8-Bit Millie. Today I'm going to spend some time pulling this old Atari 2600 apart. We're going to clean it all up, make it look pretty like it is right now, because this is after the fact. And then this will be going into the gallery. I hope you enjoy the episode. Be sure to like and subscribe. Leave any messages in the comments. If you don't like it, if you see something you don't like, let me know. So today what I'm working on here is an Atari 2600. I picked this up sight unseen. Well, I saw a picture of it on eBay. For 10 bucks plus another, I think it was 15 was the shipping. So 25 total, four plus whatever tax you threw on it. This and a number of a number of controllers came with it. And a cartridge, but nothing else. And I took a chance. And unbelievably it works. I thought it'd be dead, wouldn't work. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to pull apart so I can clean it because this is going to go in the gallery to be used. So these are pretty easy to take apart. I'm not sure which one is this one. It's a heavy sixer. Is that what they call it? It's kind of it's pretty heavy, so maybe it's a heavy sixer. I never dawned on me that channel selector was right there, but there it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip it down to its component pieces, wash it all up, make it all pretty. Ooh, ooh missing a screw there. All right. I do know it works already, I tested it. Otherwise, I'd be concerned right now seeing that a screw was missing. But since I do know it works, it just means that somebody had this open one time. This, I'm interested in. I've never seen, and it's quite possible they were here, but I don't recall ever seeing screws on the bottom just sticking out like that. I mean, it's like an afterthought. Maybe they belong there, maybe it holds it together, I don't know. So let's get all these little out. Five screws. I should have. Oh, we got a couple different sizes in here, so let's keep them four screws. Did one not come loose? Oh, yeah, one over here still. Yeah, it looks like we've got different size screws here. See, those two are longer than the other ones. I don't know if that's by choice or somebody put this thing together backwards. So we pull that up there and we should be able to pull the cover up. And it looks like, just from a peek, this is a mess inside. Like I said, I do know it works. I just gotta get past these switches, come on. Very dirty. Well, not filthy dirty. Well, we got April 25th, 1981. I'm assuming that's when it was built. Big aluminum RF there. Maybe that's why it's called a heavy six. Or maybe, I know it's a six because it's got two six uh, six switches here. Maybe it's heavy because it has that. I don't know why. They don't call the Atari 400 and the Atari 800 with their giant chunk of aluminum inside the heavy 400 and the heavy heavy 800. They don't call it the heavy Apple 3 because of this big aluminum case. So who knows? But. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this off here. I want to get down to its component plastic parts so I can wash them in a sink. Make them look all purdy. Right, so what we got here? Okay, it looks like you unplug. Let's see, do you unplug? I don't want to break nothing. Yes, you do unplug. It is sticky. There we go. Let go. You can come out. Alright. I guess I probably could have done that too. But. Alright, so that's up there. This is the RF shield and the control ports. And I'm going to unplug the cable right there. So I can get the cable out of the way. Yeah, somebody's been in here because this would have been down here too. So 
I don't see where anybody's worked on it. I don't know why somebody would have taken it apart. I mean, they may have worked on it. It's hard to tell if there's anything new here. I mean, that. It's messy. But I don't think that's new. That could be a new power supply. Or a new transformer. So, next thing we're going to do is... So, what's holding you down? Oh, that's, that's what those guys are doing. Those guys are holding that down. Again, that seems unusual that they are right there. You would think they would have recessed into it. I mean, obviously, maybe not, but it, it's not an afterthought. These aren't like they just drilled a hole in it. I mean, as you'll see as you flip it over here, it appears that there is plenty of yeah plastic right there. But it would have seemed like it would have been a lot, made a lot more sense to recess those in. I mean, everything else is designed neatly. Why not those two? But there we go. That's going to get washed. Then we got this here. Do I want to open it up and see what's inside? Should I? What do you think? Maybe. Why not? Let's take a quick look inside and see. Oh, damn. Nice and snug. Look into it. I like all the little check marks they put on. I guess that's the quality of controls. It's racing past them on the assembly line. Oh, let's see. Where's a better screwdriver? Let's get a big beast. Might have a better grip than the Dollar Tree one. Oh yeah, much better. And it's a softer grip too. My hyper tough Walmart one. But yeah, this this uh, cast aluminum here is the same as what's in the Atari 400s and the Atari 800s that they used. Those things are built like tanks. I don't think you could really break them. Well, you obviously you could, but they are built very, very strong. It's kind of fascinating. These are self-tapping screws, too. So this may be the first time this has ever come apart. Who knows? But somebody has had this apart. It seems, but well, they had it partially apart. I'm just taking this apart because I want to see. And it looks like I have now reached the point where I'm not going to get any further. But I want to just, oh, wait, wait, you're going to come out. Two screws there. Okay. I just want to make sure there's nothing in here, no dead spiders, nothing flopping around, anything like that. So let's just go down a little farther. Because as I said, this is going to be in the gallery. This is going to be available for public to use. So I want to make sure it's clean. And by public, it's probably going to be younger kids learning what the old computers and the old video game systems could do. And maybe their parents, too, telling their kids how they used to use them. Ah, so there we go. Look how simple that thing is. So simple. 6507. I'm going to assume. Which one's the 6502? That's an Amy, 80-50, so um, that's... This right here, I do believe... I do believe, and I could be wrong, but I believe this is a video chip. 6507, that's the microprocessor right there, and this is probably the ROM or whatever, or anything like that. Not that it matters. And we got one more piece of plastic right there. See, I can wash this on. You know, I don't need to wash. I'm going to wipe that down. I don't need to wash the aluminum. But I am going to take this plastic that is visible from the outside off and clean it. These are self-tapping screws that screw into the circuit board. Nothing on the back holding, no nuts, no nothing else. Just self-tapping screws going into the circuit board. It looks like you don't come off easy. So, I'm not taking you off. I'm not going to break nothing. As I said, this works. I'm not breaking it. I will wipe you down in place.
Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause this. I'm going to run into my off into the kitchen and wash this plastic. Alright, so while that is drying, I'm going to take the contact cleaner and I'm just going to clean the switches here. Again, I know they all work because I tested them all, but I want to make this as clean as possible so that there is no issue later. I'm just going to spray contact cleaner down inside the... Ooh, I'm getting low on it. Spray in there, move the switches back one bit just to clean off the contacts. Do the same in this one. Bigger ones are weird. They got they got more a different feel to them. These have definite clicks in places. Yeah, these two. That's a reset. Oh, okay. That's why because they're just momentary. Uh, duh. Okay. And then we got one more right here. This is a chintzy switch. See that? Just a plastic on top of the circuit board. Not even anything holding in place. Alrighty. So that's done there. Now we can reassemble this. I wiped it down and I'm going to reassemble it. Uh, no, wait, 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 wait. Huh. Wait. I believe this. Yeah, that was one on there. So, these two are my holes to screw down the thing. All right. Yeah, I should have took a picture before I disassembled it. Note to self, if you ever are disassembling something, take a picture of it. Even if it looks simple, because you may be wondering later, how does it go back together? You don't want to end up with extra parts. So that's how that goes. Okay, so those go there. Now we have this here. A little bit more of that out of there. This sets on here. Like so. These little screws hold it in place. That's why they were separate because I took them out before I did the bottom. Okay. Now things are starting to make a little sense to me. And this one right here. And I'm getting text messages. So once I assemble this, I'm going to pause and go get the other pieces and I'll find who's text messages. Alright, so that's done. Alright, so now I have that part done. This is dry. This sets in here. And then we got this here. This is the top. It's still a little wet in the cracks and crevices. What I'm doing here is I'm going to take this and I'm just going to just push this down through there. I'm not scratching it. It sounds like it, but I'm not. I'm just pushing this down through there. It would still be water because I wanted to get mainly, mainly the stuff inside out. Now this pops back in here. Like so. Now it's in place. Now, it's hard to see, but there are, you may or may not see it, maybe as I'm moving it, you might see it. Yeah, see right there? See the opening in the grating on both sides? It's over here, too. It doesn't show up, you can see it there. Originally, and you can see this cutouts back here, too. Originally, from what I was told, 
fascinated it's property of Atari their mold was this was supposed to have speakers in them like the original or the earlier or well, the original Pong games and the Telstars and so forth they had the sound built into the unit they didn't put the sound out to the TV they just put the TV signal out and originally from what I was told and what I read is this is going to have speakers in them too and I guess they was able to figure out how to put the sound out through the TV so they didn't do it the, I mean, some may say, well, no, those are just for vent holes. No, these, are, these aren't vent holes. You don't, you don't go through this extra effort to make a vent hole like that. Those are for speakers. Unless I'm wrong, and I have been wrong many times in my life. Now I'm going to go get the Windex, and we're going to Windex this thing up and make it nice and shiny. Alright, back with the glass cleaner, aka Windex. Let's just give it a nice spray down here. Now, I probably could have gotten away with just never taking it apart and just cleaning it on the outside and been done with it. But you never know what's inside these things. You don't know if there's a penny in it or a loose heat sink on some computers, some video games, that could just pop loose and next thing you know, it's shorted out your system. Or you don't know if there's like some dead bugs in there or other crud. You just want to get it clean. Now there's no concern about what's in it. I'm going to do the bottom a little bit with the Windex just to get off anything that didn't come off with the dish soap. Another thing you can do on these old plastics is these are protective wipes, basically the armor all that you would use in your car to make your car nice and shiny. You get a package of these things, I mean they'll last me a while. You can just take and just you can wipe down the whole thing with it. Just like you do with your car, just do the same in here. And you can make this black now very shiny, make it look really good again. And then what I do after I do this, I'll show you what I do. This also works on cartridges. If you have cartridges that are discolored from sitting around too long in the sunlight, this works really well. After you do that, just take your rag, wipe it down, get the excess off of it so there's no buildup, not oily. She is now ready to be put in the gallery. Almost. I'm still going to the cable next here. But I just spent a few minutes and took this, like I said, it was $10 on eBay, $15 shipping, untested, and it came with five controllers, two touch pads, kids learning touch pads, a Sesame Street game that uses the touch pads, and then a keypad, that's your basic um, touch keypad. No, that didn't work. Anyways. So it was a really good deal, and she works really nice. 
And now it's all cleaned up. So there you go. We pulled this all apart. We scrubbed it down. Made it nice and pretty. Made sure everything worked. And now I can set it on the counter and we can set it up with some joysticks, some games in the gallery. And then when the gallery is open, people will be able to come in and they'll be able to exper or experience what it was like playing with video games that are over 40 years old. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Leave any messages in the comments that you like. Even bad ones. I mean, I read everything. If the message is not really good for YouTube, I'll delete it, but I will read it first. Have a good day.